on your spiritual path, you're going to often encounter situations that are going to really want to push you out of your comfort zone, things that you don't feel like you're really prepared to handle. And that could be very, very scary. And I know with a lot of the people that I work with, um, they're maybe midlife looking to change a career or venture out into something new. And we navigate through those challenges. But don't be mistaken, the ascension symptoms in this path is available for everyone. And there are a lot of people, younger people, who are really going through some major life changes and experiencing this expansion. And it can feel very, very scary. Today with me, I have uh, my son, Alex, who's 23 years old. He's joining me. And uh, we had a discussion about a week ago about navigating these major life shifts and preparedness and how sometimes we could feel a little bit scared or frightened about taking the next step. So we want to dive into some of that conversation. Um, I'll ask him some questions. We'll let it unfold naturally, as I like to do on this channel. But first, I want to give Alex a little bit of time to just kind of fill you guys in on where he's at in life and what he's experiencing at this point. So go ahead. Yep. So hey everyone, uh, I'm Alex. As my dad said, I'm 23 years old, turned 24 in three weeks. And I'm at that point now where I'm finishing my last college course in just under a month and um, working a part-time job right now and about to earn my degree in aeronautical science. And as I'm beginning the journey of looking for full-time jobs, I've really kind of developed somewhat of an overwhelmed feeling at times um, because I almost feel as if, and I'm sure many of you um, my age, if you're listening, feel maybe the same way, feel as if kind of unprepared, or I almost feel like I don't know if I'm ready, if that makes sense. And um, it can be an overwhelming and a stressful feeling. And um, that's, you know, my dad and I were just discussing that and I was telling him a bit about how I just feel like I'm not, you know, I, I've learned all these things in school, right? And I, I just feel like there's a lot of things that I'm not necessarily ready for. And I read some of these job descriptions um, that, that fit in with the major, um, with the, uh, with my major in school. And it seems like I just feel unprepared. And I know deep down that I'm probably not, um, you know, I feel like I'm well prepared, but um, there's times where it's, it's very overwhelming and I can almost feel lost at times. So we've kind of just been discussing that a little bit. And we wanted to jump on here um, because I know I'm definitely not the only one feeling that way. Yeah, uh, that feeling of of being lost usually, you know, generally when we encounter these big changes, we're like right at the doorway of some major life change. We could feel lost. We're in like this void. Um, we don't know how to move forward and we our mind really can't imagine or picture what that next step is going to look like. All we have for us that's keeping us comfortable is where we just came from, right? But that doesn't always translate into where we're going and we could feel really scared. That's very common along the ascension path. And that's just a normal sign of growth when you're ready to take this big level up into a new chapter of life. These are the moments where you could either shrink and stay comfortable or trust that not just what the education system provided you with, but you have something within you that is guiding you into taking that next step. It's tough, too, because mm -hmm. with my friends and the people that I surround myself, myself with, right, you know, we're all on our own separate paths. And it's very easy to get into that comparative mentality of, oh, my friend, you know, my one friend is here in this part of his life. Like one of, one of my best friends, he got married uh, almost two years ago now, and he's the same age as me. And so there's times where, you know, I can almost feel pressure. Like, am I behind? I start asking myself questions. Am I behind? Am I, am I not, you know, in line with what my other friends are doing? Mm -hmm. And it kind of, it's like a, that monkey on my back, you know, it's kind of weighing me down. And I was talking with my, my closest friend last night, actually. And he feels like he, he feels the same way as me. He feels um, like he's letting himself down kind of, he feels like he's behind and he feels like he's not where he should be. And it, that can be a really tough feeling 
to kind of wake up and live with every day because you feel like you're not, you know, reaching your full purpose. You're not doing what you were here for. And that's, you know, whether that's being controlled by fear or you just aren't really sure what to do, it's, it's a tough mindset to navigate. And, um, you know, communicating with my dad about this has definitely helped. And I think, um, you know, you got to be able to trust yourself kind of, um, and you got to just jump. You got to take that jump and and kind of get over the fear. And um, like that. I have a lot of fear with the future, right? I don't know what path I'm going to take. I don't know where I'm going to be a year from now. I don't know where I'm going to be six months from now. Um, and then that's, that's stressful, but um, you know, there's, there's times where I feel lost for sure. And it definitely can be challenging. Yeah. That's that, that's that fear of the unknown, right? So you have expectations about where you should be. So where do you think those expectations are coming from? I think, uh, I think it's kind of placed on us really throughout growing up. I mean, I remember hearing things in school when I was in elementary school, when I was young, um, you know, oh, you got to be able to do this by the time you reach middle school. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to be, you know, up to par with the rest of your class or, oh, you know, once I get to middle school, oh, you, you know, you can't be doing this in high school. That's never going to be allowed or, you know, things like that. And then, you know, in high school, we're taught you have to go to college, you have to go to a university and, you know, then you have to just go out and get a job right away. And I went to that big university my freshman year and it wasn't for me. And when I remember coming home and telling my parents, you know, I, I had a rough year, didn't, you know, it wasn't resonating with me anymore. Right. I, I was struggling to be there when I came home from, or when I was leaving to go back to school from say winter break or spring break or whatever, that was very tough for me to go back to school because it was somewhere that, you know, it didn't feel right to go back and I didn't want to be there anymore. And I remember, you know, I was very fortunate to have the parents I do that were accepting of that and you know, understood where I was coming from. Um, and so I came home and I, I went to community college and I actually really enjoyed it. And I met one of my great friends there, but, you know, in high school, it was kind of pushed on to me that, you know, community college is kind of, a, it's a lesser path right? That's, that's what mm -hmm. I was taught in a sense. And that's, you know, a lot of my other friends feel the same way. Um, when in reality, it's, it's the same, if not better for you. And, you know, I was able to work when doing it and, and that felt right. And I enjoyed my time there and that propelled me to where I am now. But I think the expectations and the pressures kind of, they kind of really get pushed onto you from a young age. And then, you know, now I'm at the stage of my life now where, I'm not on that trajectory, right, where I didn't finish school, um, you know, in three or four years, like many others do. And now now I'm late, I'm behind and mm -hmm. and now I'm in trouble. Right. When in reality, I'm not. But that's how it feels. Yeah. And I feel regret for that kind of, you know. So, you know, having expectations set like that in the education system is very powerful in this way, because I remember going through college, it's, you know, through high school, you know, grade school, high school, college, it's like everything was laid out for you. And that was the path you went on naturally. And where, where I grew up, as you know, you know, a lot of people just went off to college. That's just what they did. Right. So you felt you had to do the same thing. Um, I had situations where it didn't resonate with me. Um, I stuck with it because I felt at that point that's something that I just had to do. I couldn't, I couldn't let go of that programming at that point, and that's okay because my life led me to where I am now, right? So um, I embraced that path. But those beliefs are put onto us when we're young and we're going through school. And I think when when you start to awaken and you start to realize that there's more to me than just this these limiting beliefs pop up, right? And that's gonna, you're gonna feel that and it's not gonna feel good. Something's gonna tell you that this newness that you have coming through is just wrong, it's not right. This is what you should be doing. And that actually is the conditioned nervous system. Your body is holding on to this old belief system that you've been taught, you've been told, and at some point you've made a choice to accept it but now there's something coming forward within you that is just showing you a new way, a new light, a new path. So in order to fully embrace that, it's natural to have these feelings that you're feeling. 
because that's the old belief system coming to the surface so that it could become conscious. Because if it doesn't become conscious, it remains there unconsciously or subconsciously guiding you down a path that really doesn't resonate. That leads to a life of being really unfulfilled. Yeah, absolutely. And I can speak yeah. to that um, because I've kind of lived it over the past couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. when, I was, when I started community college, I, I got a job, a local job, and um, it was fantastic at first, right? You know, I'm going to school, I'm able to make money in the, in the background, whatever, you know, it was, it was great. And I stayed there for years because it was, it was easy. You know, it works with my schedule and it's close to home and the hours work out. And, and as the years went on, I became more and more unhappy with the job. And I felt mm -hmm. like, you know, my time wasn't being respected. I wasn't being respected, so on and so forth. I don't need to get into that. But I stayed because it was comfortable and I didn't, that meant I didn't have to go out and find a new job. I didn't have to interview so on and so forth, whatever. And those shifts got harder and harder. And I started mm -hmm. dreading going in. I would wake up and I would sometimes feel maybe even angry that I had to go into work. Um, and I think that those feelings, you, you will feel them. And I'm sure many of you have. And maybe you choose not to listen to them or maybe you just don't know. And you stick with it because it's comfortable, right? But that's, you're being told something. It's time mm -hmm. to move on. It's time to go in a different direction. And I didn't listen to those feelings for a long time. And I stuck with it. And it ate me alive, in a sense. And I remember, you know, after I finally ended up leaving the job, those, those few months after, I was the happiest I had been in years. Right? I, I was waking up. I was ready to go. I was attacking the day. Mm -hmm. getting things done, doing stuff with friends, so on and so forth. It, I, I felt like a completely different person. And it's because I finally listened to those feelings. And I said, no more. Let's, let's do something different. Yeah. And sometimes you're in situations, you find yourself where there's an energy there that just doesn't resonate. But also, at times, that energy is reflecting something back to you that's something that's awakening within you. So if you ever find yourself in situations where... You know, you feel you're not being respected. We look at that and we say, is that an opportunity for me to kind of set boundaries or for me to right. step into my, you know, empoweredness and stand up for myself and things like that? So everything's always showing us an opportunity um, for growth. And sometimes, you know, it's just like, okay, this no longer serves me. So it's time to just step away and do something else because that could also provide opportunity for clarity. Uh, and, and allow yourself to get centered and aligned so that you can make decisions that are more aligned instead of like going back to the comfort place of comfort. And that's how we grow. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, the the lessons will continue to present themselves mm -hmm. um, until you learn it. it like it's going to keep happening and um, you can choose to uh, learn the lesson whether you whether it's something that you want or not right maybe it's a mm -hmm. tough lesson we all have tough lessons that we need to learn in life and um you know sometimes they're hard we don't want to learn them, but they're important and we have to to be able to take that next step and uh, that's something that i'm dealing with right i'm, I'm entering a mm -hmm. huge shift in my life and i'm kind of trying to navigate as best i can and it's challenging but you know i think building yourself up with a really good support system, being able to communicate with people because you don't have to do it alone, right? You communicate with people, ask questions, um, and, and you'll figure it out. Just just trust yourself, listen to your yeah. feelings, and, and you'll be guided in, in the, the way you're supposed to be going for sure. Yeah, the, vo the voice in your head is always going to result back to, like, what have I been told I need right. to be? And, you know, we become aware of that. Right. When we breathe, do breath work, we become aware, create space so we could hear that voice. We don't have to be a slave to that voice because you're going to start feeling that pressure, as we talked about, that I need to be doing this. This is what society expects of me. And as we expand in consciousness, we realize that that's just a belief and that we have a choice internally that we could connect with something greater. And the, the freaky thing, the scary thing with that is that we have to detach from having the answer now because we're not always going to have it available to us now. 
But when we start to, to detach from that programming and the limiting beliefs, start to go in our own way and even just take some time to sit in presence and in silence. You know, it could be days, weeks, whatever it takes to allow the new to come forward, you know, and kind of shed these limiting beliefs, new opportunities and new paths unfold. And that's how we spot them. Because what I've always told you, you know, when you were going through college, that I didn't want you to go to college to get a degree and then go into a career that was unfulfilling for you, something that didn't resonate, something that you didn't want to do just because you felt you had to go out and do this because of programming. And I feel that a lot of people do that. And they, you know, when they're 50 years old, 40 years old, whatever, they're like, wow, I, this just doesn't resonate with me. And this is kind of where I was. I mean, I had a fan, you know, a fantastic career as an yeah. accountant. Um, but then I started to open up in a big, big way. And I had an opportunity that presented itself for me to, to leave that profession. And I took it because I just felt it no longer served me. Not that it wasn't great while I was there, but I felt that it was time for something new to get into this and, and reach out and help people. Um, but I think many people go through life, they get, you know, even you hear 60 and 70 year olds, like, wow, what happened? Like, what, you know, how did I get here? I don't feel fulfilled. Yeah, I've got money. Yeah, I had a stable career, but there's still something missing. So I think a lot of the people your age now are really because of the energy that we're receiving cosmically, it's waking up within you. You're coming in with more light than like we had, my generation had. And, you know, you know this because, you know, when, when my mom, when grandma, you know, passed all that energy that was around the house, I've talked about this on my channel, you were intuitive, you know, you're intuitive and you were able to pick up on the energy that was in our home as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, you had, you're tapped into this and what's happening is your higher self is just saying, yeah, this old you that's been programmed through the education system over the years, mm -hmm. it's time to shed that. It's time to yeah. trust that there's something bigger for you moving forward. It hasn't landed yet, but that's okay. Part of the lesson is to really embrace that, embody that, and trust that if you move forward from a place of alignment, you will be supported and you will be taken care of. Yeah. It's funny. We're on like the... Uh... We're on like the same frequency right now because this was this was the direction that I was gonna try and take mm -hmm. it this conversation. Um, yeah, you know, I see a lot of videos online of elderly people, um, you know, being asked, "What's the secret to a happy life?" You know, "What's your advice?" If you could go back in time, what's the advice you would give your younger self? And they always say the same thing: it's always slow down, enjoy the years, enjoy the time. Mm -hmm. And they always say, like in your twenties, you know, you don't have to have it all figured out and right. it's funny because it feels that way right mm -hmm. um, but i see a lot of my friends now going into careers that they've never showed interest in and it's it's hard for me because i try and tell them and obviously everyone's situation is different but i tell them like i ask them all the time is this something that you know you could see yourself doing forever yeah. and they always say no but it works for now and i fear for them that you know they're gonna get trapped Right. Um, and and I, I trust that they won't. But, you know, that's always a possibility. People get comfortable like we've been discussing. And, um, you know, it's it's challenging to see because, as my dad, you know, mentioned a little bit about his story, you know, I saw it and I, I saw the same things mm -hmm. I was discussing earlier, the same feelings coming home, frustrated, you know, annoyed. Oh, I got to go back tomorrow, things like that. And that's that's a life that no one should live and i think you know i'm one that struggles with wanting to be able to do things right away right we've been mentioning how the lessons sometimes take time to learn for me yeah. for example i've been starting to pick up guitar and i get frustrated easily because i want to be able to just be a professional now right i want to be good mm -hmm. and learn it now it's you know, you got to be patient. You got to stick with it. Things will open up and I'm putting in the time. I'm putting in the effort, you know, within myself and it's, it's starting to progress, you know, and I'm starting to yeah. see improvement and it's the same thing with these lessons in life. You know, you got to just stick with it and learn and you'll mess up. And that's one of the things that I've really learned over the past few years. Like you'll mess up. I'm going to mess up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to 
you know, there's no wrong path, right? That's, yeah. that's something that I firmly believe in. There's no wrong path. There's no wrong choice, right? Um, you know, I see it as if you're at, if you're at a decision point in your life, there's two roads and we'll say that this way is the wrong way, right? It's going to mm-hmm. lead me back eventually to where I need to be um, right. with lessons in between that. Lessons right? along the way. Yep. That's right. And so um, it's funny because I can get on here and I can say these things, right? But then in the moment, things can be challenging. Um, but I know there's a lot of people my age that are feeling pressure. They feel like, oh, you know, I got to get... I get to get married soon, right? Like I'm in my mid twenties. I'm in maybe my early thirties. I got to get married soon. You know, I got to start a family. Like it's it's not true. And I feel the pressure too, because I know that my parents, um, you were 30, right? When, when I was born, I believe Mm -hmm. 30, 30, like I feel that pressure. Like, Oh man, like I'm turning 24. Like I got six years to, you know, get married and start a family. And it's like, that's not, true like i don't mm-hmm. have to do that but that's, that's that pressure. Voice. it's, it's yeah. on myself i'm placing that on myself no one's no one's doing that but it's like mm-hmm. those are things that you know we're dealing like people my age are dealing with and on your point where you talked about how my generation is coming in with more light and they're kind of beginning to change the narrative i think that you know within the next few years these these types of jobs with like you know a very management type structure uh you know with like a boss and then everyone else is the employees i think that's going to kind of become obsolete i think that people are starting my age are starting to kind of see through that and understand that there's more efficient ways to run businesses and how everyone can be you know respected and we can all work together and things like that um and i see videos online of you know hr and bosses management whatever maybe disrespecting new employees and people my age are, they're not tolerating it anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, you know, maybe past generations would have. And so the things are changing um, and the change is fantastic. um, But it's, it's scary. It's scary. Well, like when the old breaks down, it's going to be scary because from the human perspective, that's what we know. And being able to accept that and allow that to flow is really the key. But I agree, that is what's changing. As we go through this like big expansion in consciousness, um, everything that was limiting, that was holding us to these lower frequency timelines, it's all dissolving. All those anchors, all those ties are disappearing. It's because of the light that, that we're receiving, the planet, the light we're receiving, that's us, our higher self dropping in. And it's bringing in new ways of being. But in order for us to allow that to come forward and to navigate that path, we have to really be able to see what was tying us down. And that's like what you're going through with the limiting beliefs and things in in these societal expectations, because, you know, with your friends that, you know, they, they choose these careers and, you know, maybe, maybe they'll be happy and maybe they won't, you know, we don't know, but down the road, what happens is, you know, societal programming doesn't stop just with college. It goes on to, like you said, you get married, you have, you have a family, then you you buy a home, you get a mortgage you have credit card debt, right? And now the, the programming really seems to constrict you and become this monkey on your yeah. back and very, very heavy because, wow, you know what? I want to change my career, but boy, I can't take that risk right now because look at what I've got here, right? I accumulated all these things and all this debt, and now I don't feel free. So, you know, this freedom to navigate life is really, I think, what people are looking for because that's the expansiveness and the freedom we're starting to feel within, it's just yeah. not reflecting yet because we have these old beliefs that are still there, but they're, you know, anchoring that old timeline, but they're starting to break down. And like with, with you, you know, and some of your friends and others um, in your generation, you're the ones really breaking that down. Now, you know, maybe your friends still have parents that are anchored to the old way and the beliefs and, you know, you should be doing this and this and this and this. And there's a lot of that out there and that's okay. A lot of those people are going to start to awaken as well. Um, but that's really what's happening. This is all just the result of an expansion in consciousness and ascension and being tapped into, Hey, this doesn't resonate means that you've embodied some energy that is not of that low frequency. It's something higher that sees an expansive new way of doing things. And you're actually allowing that reality to start to manifest. So the more people that do that are listening to this video, that are in these situations of feeling constricted 
and can take a breath and just be like, okay, that's programming, right? I'm going to just hit the pause button right now and stay centered and allow something new to come forward. That really is what collectively starts to manifest that new reality you're talking about with these old business structures starting to break down and change. You know, the internet came along and changed everything. The internet yeah. really is just like, it's just a manifestation of the expansion and consciousness that's been happening, right? It's manifesting now as the yeah. internet so we could all get on and we could communicate and talk and do business in different ways. So that is part of this new earth starting to come forward. We just need to take a look at the old paradigms and really, really release or detach from them. Yeah, but I think um, a lot of people, I'm seeing a lot of people now my age, they're they're taking different chances. They're they're starting businesses and if they fail, okay, fine, let's try something else. I'm seeing people start bands. People are taking swings and you know many of them hit it right out of the park mm -hmm. um and and many that don't they they try again and um yeah. yeah i think one thing that i really want to convey to you guys that i've really been working on is not living with regrets and i could sit here and i could say oh i stayed at that job for you know way too long i mean i was unhappy and i can sit here and you know hold on to regret for the rest of my life and let it kind of eat me up but I can't change the past, right? The past is in the past and I learned the lessons and it's not like the job didn't serve me well, right? It did a lot of great things. I met a ton of great people, had a lot of great experiences. So why regret it, right? Could I have left earlier and been happier and made more money somewhere else? Sure, absolutely. But I can't go back and change that. So why should I sit here and, and just and dwell on that and dwell on the past when I can look at the lessons that I learned and what it showed me? And how I, you know, it showed me how I needed to stand my ground and say enough's enough. It, it pointed me in the direction I needed to go. And I could say, thank you. Thank you for that. You've served me well. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's go on to the next thing. And then that's, you know, regret is a, a lot of, I know a lot of people have a lot of regrets. Um, but I think that if you're able to kind of you know, internalize internalize those and, and understand why you regret it and, and look at the lessons and and things like that and then you can let it go i think that's that's very yeah. powerful i think that's very beneficial for you yeah if you could look at regrets as really just um expectations that an older aspect of you like maybe a lower frequency aspect of you had about a certain situation we start to judge it i stayed there too long or i left too soon and things like that. We start to judge the decisions that we made. And within that path, there were lessons and things to be learned. There were expansion opportunities. Um, so when we live in the past like that, we're really, we're really like turning away from an aspect of our energy and we're placing it into this thing. And it's not available for us to get present and allow whatever's next to unfold. So it really doesn't serve, right, to have a regret. You just right. look at it. It's that we always do the best we can at the time. Right. And, you know, as we're expanding, you know, we, we gain more knowledge, we gain more wisdom through experiences, through anchoring more of our light. Um, back in the past, we didn't have that accessible to us. We did the best we can with that we could in that moment. And that's okay. Right. So there is, like you yeah. say, there's no, there's no, uh, nothing serves with regret. You know, it doesn't serve you. There's so no, you let that go. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah, reclaim no your energy. Yeah. yeah. Makes more of you available for opportunities that are trying to come your way. You know, yep. you get to be able to perceive them when you're not going over something you did in the past. And I struggle with this too, always on decisions and things. You know, I've had that issue, something I'm working through. But when you're focused on that, you're not focused on opportunities that the universe is trying to serve up to you. You can't perceive them. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree completely with that. Yeah, so I think it's important to like, you know, when you, we get these big life changes coming up, like you with with going, you know, graduating from college and moving on with life, it's important to really be able to just, you know, slow it down and kind of gather up everything that's been happening, kind of allow it to settle within you. Everything you've just gone through, a big part of your life, really maybe hasn't quite found its home within within here yet. So you let that settle 
And then you start to gain clarity of thought and clarity of, of purpose and what fulfills you. And you start to move in that direction and yet still watch what your mind's going to do, which is, well, how are you going to make money doing that? Or how are you going to do this or that? Right. Yeah. You watch that because that's what your mind is going to do. And I want everybody to know that your mind is going to do what your mind is going to do. But the more you can become aware of it and see what it's doing and observe it, the less energetic charge it has, meaning it's not going to have that control or power over you. These are societal limiting beliefs, societal beliefs that limit yep. you, that can control you if you choose to let it. Now, unconsciously, many people choose to let those beliefs control them. But if you're aware of them, you no longer have to let them control you. You can make a decision from a conscious standpoint and move in that direction and be excited for not having it all figured out, for not knowing what's coming next. Because when you don't have an expectation, when you can just feel inside and be like, you know what, I'm grateful for where I am right now. I'm grateful for what I experienced. I'm feeling that. I'm embodying that. I have an abundance of people around me who love me and support me. I'm going to embody that for the moment. And I'm going to be grateful for the experiences I just had. You become more available for the magical stuff to land. The stuff that you couldn't possibly expect. So when your mind wants yeah. to have expectations about what the next step is, it's limiting you. When you become available and grateful for where you are right now, things that are mind-blowing start to come forward. Yeah. But I think that's the challenge that many, many people my age face. You know, you feel the pressure of, I got to get a job now, right? Mm -hmm. Got to start making money now. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm almost running out of time. It went in reality, like I have endless time ahead of me, um, but I feel like I'm running out of time. And I feel like, like I said earlier, maybe I'm even behind schedule. And I think, you know, when we start feeling that way, that's when people are pushed into decisions that they don't really want to make. Right. right. Because they're, they're, they're pressured in. Oh, I don't like what I'm feeling. You know, this is this is scary. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's Their let's go here controls. because this is easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. I mean, that's happening with one of my best friends. I, I'm afraid. Like we were, we've, mm -hmm. we were talking last night, like I said earlier, and it's just he's really feeling the pressure, and he, um, you know, he's feeling like he's got to make certain decisions because he set goals um, when he was younger that he wanted to be in this certain spot at 25 and we turn 25 okay. next year in 2025 and now he feels like he's behind on schedule and so now he's like well i'm, I'm gonna work more hours i'm i'm gonna basically like cut down on my free time and like what i enjoy doing so i can work more hours so i can get the money to yeah. get to the goal that i said earlier and i was telling him i'm like i don't know if that's like, is that a healthy lifestyle? And for some, maybe it is, right? If setting goals is fantastic, do it mm -hmm, and reach mm -hmm. the goal if you want. Sure. But I also think mm -hmm. that you got to be able to take care of yourself mentally and physically. And just because you set a goal doesn't necessarily mean that you got to, you got to drop everything and, and, and get there, right? Like you were saying, appreciate where you are and the lessons you've learned and, and things change. You, I could set a goal five, six, seven years ago. And I've learned things along the path. And now maybe I don't even want to be at the goal that I set back then. You know, right. so things change and you got to be able to adapt and you got to uh -huh. just do what feels right. And you'll feel it. It's not it's not a mental thing telling you, right? Because like you said, the mind is going to tell you certain things, right? Like the comfortable, mm -hmm. comfortable things. But you'll feel it. You will feel it. And, you know, if you're supposed to be there, you'll feel it. And if you're not supposed to be there, you'll know. And... And yeah, that's that. yeah. And the good, I mean, the goal setting, it's like, okay, I could have set a goal when I was 20. And now I could be, you know, frantically, whatever, trying to reach that goal. Now, when that goal was set by an aspect or version of me, that doesn't have the wisdom or the knowledge or the information that I have now, right? So that goal is really obsolete. Um, goals are good. They're, they're fantastic. You know, when you're trying to accomplish and get things done, but it's also important to be able to reflect on where you are, where you've come from, you know, how far you've come, and then look at those goals to see if they need to be modified. Because again, 
you know, when I'm setting a goal from an aspect of me from the past, I'm a different person now than I was back then. And right. different things matter to me now than it did back then. Maybe my goal was to, you know, like have a million dollars by the time I was 25 or 30, 30 years old um, or whatever it was, right? Mm -hmm. uh, back then, because that, based on where I was at that point in time, that's what was important to me. That was the priority. Right. right? And so that past version of me would have probably had to work a lot of hours over time, not had a social life, not been able to enjoy life to achieve a goal. Now, things are different for me now. That goal would not apply to me, would not matter to me now, because it's more about becoming present, becoming, finding peace and, and finding like freedom, things like that. So, so it changes as we grow, our goals change. So we never want to really keep things really rigid, right? Because right. this journey kind of goes like this. There's always twists and turns. There's always opportunity as more of you, you embody more of your higher self, you have new information available, your DNA activate, more of your DNA activates your light. You do some healing work, you clear, and you become more of your higher self. You have information now that makes the old goal irrelevant. So I think the important thing to say is review your goals. Where are you now? What needs to be adjusted? Are those goals still relevant to me? Are they important to me? Do they have meaning? And if not, you modify. So um, that's flexibility. That's being in the current of life, in the flow of life, and yeah. not being anchored by some expectation that a version of you from the past had working with far limited knowledge. Yeah. And, and looking at like, right. yeah, for sure. And looking at like reviewing your goals, I think something that I struggle with is looking back at like all that I've accomplished and actually feeling you know, pride and feeling proud of myself. I think a lot of people are so focused on what's next. What do I need to do next? You know, what's the next step? Um, and, and, you know, I'm one of those people that struggles with that. And I think that, you know, you got to be able to take a step back and and look at everything you've accomplished and, and see all the lessons you've made and see how far you've come. Yeah. Because I, I think there's, you know, many of us struggle to to do that. And we kind of can lose sight of all the progress that's been made throughout the years, throughout, you know, you can even go you know, past a couple months, past a few weeks, whatever. Um, but, you know, we're making progress and we're learning and, you know, it's important to be able to see that and, and understand, yeah. wow, you know, I'm not who I used to be. You know, I, I've improved so much at this and so on and so forth. That's important to be able to reflect on that. Observing your growth, observing what you've accomplished and and feeling it, I think feeling it is so important to just take take some time and be like, wow, you know, like, good for me. Like, wow, you know, I was able to do that. It feels so amazing. It feels so good. Yeah. Because when we can actually feel that, we're sending that that those frequencies, high frequencies out into the universe. And the universe is going to respond with more. It's a law of attraction and law of vibration, really. It's going to respond with more opportunity to experience those emotions, which is what we want, right? So if what I'm feeling want, accomplished, yeah. I'm going to be I'm going to be attracting more opportunities and situations that are going to allow me to feel accomplished, right, and and fulfilled, yeah. right. So that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. So I mean, great point. It's so important to just be able to reflect on that and actually feel how far you've come feel it that is so yeah. so powerful because when you do that that's who you become you become in that in that moment and the more you're able to do that like throughout your day take a few bre breaths and feel those kind of emotions you embody it and you start to actually become that over longer periods of time so your reality yeah. starts to reflect that that's how you change reality the mind wants to change it by got to get another job got to get two more jobs I got to go to the grind, got to give up this stuff that I really like, like my hobbies, because boy, I want, you know, I want freedom. So we got to go work more. That's how the mind has been taught to create freedom is through hard labor and work and hours, right? right. We can embody that by just simply looking back at the things that we've accomplished. It made us feel amazing. And our life is going to start to reflect that. So that's the old way of doing things is through the mud 
the hard way, the knuckle grinding stuff, right? That's the mind. So we observe right. that we have a new way of being landing and we're embodying that right now by just feeling it, feeling those frequencies and becoming them. Yeah. How have you been able to, have you noticed growth with when things come up that um, trigger you? How are you handling those compared to maybe how you would have handled things in the past? Yeah, for sure. I think that, um, I mean, you know, obviously, but I used to be very, um, I don't know how I want to put it, I guess like hyper emotional. I think I would act on my emotions um, quite quickly. And when, whether I would be frustrated or upset or, you know, something would happen and um, used to really, you know, get really upset, really angry and, or, you know, sad or whatever. I think that, you know, as I've experienced more things and I've learned to um, communicate with other people and I've learned to uh, really support myself with like a good friend group and people that I can talk to and that I trust. Mm -hmm. um, I've really noticed that though the, the old way of me handling challenges, triggers, um, that's gone. And I can, I can take, you know, I can take a step back now and I can take a deep breath and I can really think things through. And if I'm really upset um, or angry, I can let it go and I can think about it later, right? Uh, when I have more of a, a clear mind. And I think that that's yeah. really important because sometimes we can make poor decisions or decisions that maybe we'll regret, right? Later, um, when mm -hmm. we're upset and we're angry, maybe we'll say something to someone that we don't mean, or we'll, we'll act on something, uh, you know, whatever. And being able to just kind of take that step back, realize that it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, I can think about it later um, and really just kind of communicate. Like if I, if I have conflict with my friends, I'm really able to now kind of just say, you know, this is, this is bothering me right now. This is annoying me. Like I will, I want to take a break. Uh, you know, we can talk about this later when we both have clear minds, clear heads, so on and so forth. So I think just really taking that step back and looking at it as a whole with a clear mind rather than in that yeah. frustrated or upset state is something that I've really um, grown with over the past few years. And, and that's something that I'm very proud of because looking back, I'm definitely not happy with the way I used to handle things for sure. Yeah, because you get some of that emotional reactivity that I've had, you know, that comes down from my side, from like my parents sure. down to me. It's like very, you know, like fiery kind of energy. And that's something that I've, been working with you know for the last number of years too to do that to be able to create space and like breathing and just breathing in and just taking some space there taking a few moments bring some clarity forward like right away right it gets you out of that mm -hmm. emotional charge yeah um which is so so powerful because you probably are finding that you could come to a much more uh, quick and satisfactory resolution with that with people right Absolutely. when you're from that perspective yeah, I mean, it used to be um, like I'm a, I'm a big uh, PC gamer. So a lot of my, you know, I'm always playing mm -hmm. games with my friends. All my friends, you know, were in school or they finished school and they've moved across the country to their jobs and so on. So playing games with them, that's my way to kind of stay in contact with them. And so, you know, any any gamers listening, you'll know arguments happen. We'll get frustrated with each other, annoyed, whatever. And you know, it used to be where we would just argue and argue and argue and butt heads. And then like people would say things that they didn't mean and it would get personal. And then it's like, okay, well now we're, we're acting on our emotions and we're digging ourselves holes. And now it's like, wow, instead of me just apologizing for, um, you know, maybe a miscommunication or maybe I did something in this game. Sorry about that, whatever. And now it's, wow, I, you know, I'm sorry. I took it personal. I'm sorry that, you know, this was mentioned i'm sorry that we you know i was acting like this so on and so forth so i think yeah. when you're able to and you've told me this when you're able to just like remove yourself from the situation for a bit and just kind of give it more thought um not only will you see the situation better but you will then start to see oh you know maybe i you know maybe i did mess up right maybe i made a mistake and maybe it's partially my fault you know because it used to be when I was when I would argue with my friends, no, it's I didn't make a mistake. It's not my fault. Like it's yeah. it's all on you. And now it's like I find myself apologizing, um, you know, in these situations more than I ever used to because 
I take a step back, I look at the situation, and then I, then I kind of take the time to look at their perspective and realize, you know, okay, you know, I see how my actions may have affected you. You know, I'm sorry for that. And that's all because I take the step back. You know, I let it go. Maybe I'll do something else. Maybe I'll mm-hmm. go, you know, play the bass or I'll, I'll play the drums or I'll listen to music or I'll go for a walk, whatever. Get my mind off that topic for a little bit. And then when my mind is clear and the emotions are gone, then I'll start, you know, thinking about it again with a clear mind. And then I can yeah. kind of see it more clearly and attack it head on that way instead. Yeah. So these these trigger points are really opportunities for you to be able to to experience something that that's been harbored within you. It comes up. Right. It's like, oh, maybe we're being like I'm being attacked. Right. I feel like I'm being attacked. So it's the defensive personality comes up, which is the ego to try to be protective. But you're seeing that process unfold and you're not allowing yourself to become it. You're like, okay. I got upset. I got angry. That's okay. I I see you, ego. I know you're there, but I'm not going to become you. I'm going to remove myself. I'm going to regather myself, take some time, and I'm going to see this from a a point of clarity and not from a victim or attacked perspective, right? And that just changes everything. So that allows you to take that energy that's been locked away in that protective persona for all these years and allows you to reclaim it. It becomes now you know, it reintegrated. So that's going to continue to come up, but with less charge each time, you know, you may get triggered, you may want to get defensive, but it's not going to be as strong as it was before because you're integrating that energy. You know, you're gathering it, you're pulling it back in. And when you do that, you become more clear, you gain more clarity on your intuition and your guidance. And you're able to stay like centered and aligned and handle situations gracefully. Right. Yeah. So there are situations that come up for you to be able to heal. You yeah. Know, and we start no, to realize a, that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely like what I've experienced. Like those things that used to bother me, you know, on games with my friends or whatever we're doing, mm-hmm. they used to bother me, really annoy me. Sometimes I'd feel like, oh, maybe my friends are doing it on purpose to get after me. But like, oh, I'm yeah. the victim here. It's on me. Now it's those are things that I laugh off. And that's because I've learned to not take it so seriously. And I've also communicated to my friends, hey, you know, whatever you're doing here, you know, like it kind of bothers me. Right. And, um, you know, clear communication and then just realizing, you know, what bothers me. Okay, how can I how can I deal with this? Right. Because it's not the end of the world. Right. And then it's just you said not becoming the emotion and the ego. Right. You know, when you're acting on the emotion, that's when the real problems, you know, get stirred up. And you, and you, like I said, you dig yourself a deeper hole. And, you know, I'm by no means perfect, right? I still have my, my conflicts, my problems, mm-hmm. and that happens. But, you know, I'm learning along the way, and I'm much better at handling these situations than I used to be. And that's something that I can look back and be proud of myself for, for sure. Yeah, and that's huge because um, instead of being reactive, it's, you know, you're being responsive and you're responding from a perspective of strength and, you know, being able to be authentic. Like, okay, guys, you know, this is this really bothered me or whatever. Instead of just being defensive, you're like being authentic because you're more in tune, right, with your energy and with your body. And that's the lower chakras, um, starting to open up um, so you can come forward from a more peaceful type of perspective, but yet be authentic and establish boundaries, you know, and that that's yeah. hugely powerful. Yeah. I mean, you're allowed to have things that bother you, right? Sure. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. like no one should ever feel bad if something upsets them or annoys them or whatever. Like, you're allowed yeah. to feel what you feel and you know, you can communicate that. And then, I mean, I guess, obviously, if the people, you know, ignore that and they keep doing it, then maybe they're not necessarily yeah. the right people to surround yourself with, right? You got to maybe separate yourself from True. them. But, mm-hmm. you know, um, just communicate, set the boundaries and just just learn, really gain that understanding of what bothers you and not only what bothers you, but why. Really look into it. Why is this bothering me? Yeah. You know, my friend's doing this thing in the game. Why is that so annoying to me? Yeah. Right? Is it something that like I could prevent? Um, is it something that I need to talk to him about? So on and so forth, whatever. Just 
understand the whys as well. You know? Yeah. And the mind, you know, our mind wants to create a story around it. So we get triggered and it's like, oh, okay, well, he did this or she did that because of this or whatever. And it's making me feel this way. The mind will do that. And yeah. we get lost. We get caught up in that energy when all we got to do is remember that it's just energy. Like, okay, something triggered this dense energy that doesn't, we label it as not good. Or we label it as I'm being attacked. It's just energy. It's coming up. You're actually being shown this by your higher self. It's guiding you to feel this because yep. this dense emotion is taking up space within your body. And it's blocking more of your divine energy from flowing through, right? So it's like, okay, let's just feel this. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what you're doing because as you continue to get triggered in these situations, they're holding less charge. So you've reclaimed that space, right? It's no longer pulling you out of alignment. So that's fantastic. And that's a surefire sign of growth. And I don't think people really appreciate those moments. It's so important to be aware. And I've done videos recently on this of how you are responding to or and not reacting to situations that maybe would have kind of thrown you off the ledge in the past. That's a surefire sign of growth. Yeah. Right there. So like yeah. what advice? Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to uh, comment one more thing on that about Mm -hmm. that you're saying the mind will create stories it's important mm -hmm. to not let those stories take over and you to the point right. where you start assuming you know assuming things that aren't true right and i, I, yep. I will always bring it back to communicate like if you have a problem communicate with someone because if, you, if you're not communicating and you know i just got out of an argument with someone and then i'm sitting alone by myself yeah. i'm going to start thinking oh maybe it's this maybe he's doing it because of this like, you know and so on and so forth and you can't yeah. do that because you will just dig yourself in an infinite hole and you'll go deeper and deeper and you will trap yourself. So yeah, all of those thoughts and stories come from traumas that we have experienced within us. Right. So we create these stories around something that happened to us. We project them onto the person. And that could be the opposite thing of what they're what they're thinking or the re they could just be having a bad day, right? Right. Could be right a rough day. That, yeah, we personalize it. And that's because of that trauma. So again, the mind will create all these stories based on what we've experienced. That's why this is coming up to be able to, to detach from those stories. It's like with college and, you know, with moving on in life, detach from these limiting beliefs that say we have to do something. These are stories that we've bought into throughout our lifetime that we have to do things this way, right? Yeah. It's all, the, it all, it's all the same. But when we look at it, it's just energy, right? So we want to be able to just, Feel the emotions. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. We label it as not feeling good, right? That's okay. We judge right. it. That's just the human. That's what we do, right? But yep. you'll start to not judge it. You'll be like, okay, this is just dense energy. I just feel it. It's just lower vibrational physics. I'm going to allow myself to feel this and detach from whatever my mind is telling me is the reason for this. So what advice would you give someone who's in college maybe not quite yet graduating, but really concerned and worried about, you know, maybe they have no idea about what their next step is going to be or how to even go about it. And then we'll wrap up after that. Yeah, sure. I think it's, that's an interesting one. Cause that's like, that's pretty much the situation I'm in, but I think, you know, the advice I would give is just take a breath, and like relax, like, it's going to be fine. You're going to, you know, end up where you're supposed to be. And, you know, there's no wrong path, right? So just yeah. take it a day at a time, right? That's something I can struggle with. I'm always looking ahead, you know, weeks, months ahead. Just take it a day at a time and, and try not to overwhelm yourself. I think when you, you know, make sure that you're you're still doing things you enjoy, you know, because that helps kind of take the load off. It helps kind of reset the mind a little bit. Just yeah. just kind of relax and, you know, stay focused with what's coming. But, you know, you don't have to have it figured out. And it definitely feels that way. But, you know, ask ask questions, right? Ask, ask your parents, ask your friends and, and and stop comparing yourself to your friends and you know your college classmates and your former high school classmates stop comparing what your life is to theirs because you're on your own path and everyone's different and you'll figure it out 
So that's yeah. that's what I'm holding on to. That's what I'm trusting. And yeah, can't worry about what the unknown is because it's unknown. So just take it a day at a time. Exactly. Do what you can and do your best. And then, you know, we're we're in our 20s. So we've got some time to figure it out. So. Yeah, I think eventually the unknown is going to be the exciting piece. That's going to be the excitement. True. It's the stuff that you can't anticipate and the stuff that lands that's so much bigger than you ever could have realized or expected. That's when life gets truly exciting. And that's what comes out of being present, living in the flow. Not letting yep. your mind control everything that you do. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Great conversation. I'm so grateful um, yeah. that we were able to bring this to, to people. And um, yeah, if you're going through college, you've got this.